where are we? We're in a new... I don't know what you call it, a town or a village, but it's brand new. 4,000 4, homes. 4,000 homes have been built, brand new school, new cafe, I presume there's shops. There's an art gallery by the look of it over there. It's called Nan's Leaden. Um, Just on the outskirts of Newquay. Yeah, and, but it's been made to look old fashioned. Well, not old fashioned, it's made, made to look like an old town or an old village. The layout, the streets and everything, all the streets uh, have got Cornish names and they're in Cornish. Um, and it's got a really nice atmosphere to it from the little bit we've seen already. We're hoping that one of the staff will come and tell us a bit more about it. It's quite nice and it's on a sunny day as well. We found it by accident. Yeah, we found it by accident just driving around looking for breakfast after we've been to um, Roach for showers. So it's quite nice. The Put important, here. important thing coffee's arrived. Yeah, we've got the coffee. So, this is the remains of the full English that we had. It was very nice. It was exceptionally nice. Um, nicely laid out. Nice and presented, I should say. Oh, this is my friend Leaf bit. Nice and presented. Nice and hot. Mm. Tasty. And it's Filling. our favourite Cornish coffee as well. So we've got Tom, uh, who works at the little Cornish pantry, which we've just had breakfast at. And it was a very nice breakfast, I must say. Um, but Tom's going to tell us a bit about the uh, village or his town, would you say? Uh, so this is just an estate, it's called Nansled, uh, built on Dutchy ground, so all owned by Prince Charles. Uh, he regularly visits down here, uh, we often see him in the morning of the... And uh, this estate is built on the ideas of uh, sustainability and uh, community-based friendliness and everything like that. And you do see it, especially with shops like this. Uh, people, you get your regulars down, uh, and a lot of them are community activists as well. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been open? Uh, uh, so we've been open since October the 1st, 2018, and I've been working here myself since the start of August. Right. And the, the but the, vill the town or the village is really just come, up and coming, isn't it? Yeah. The, so the school was open last Monday? Uh, yeah, yeah, 9th, 9th of September. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, the first house was opened in 2014, as shown by the obelisk over there. Um, and my house, which is just briefly down the road, uh, it was built in 2016. So, very quick progression, and uh, now it goes, the estate goes down into about, probably about a thousand yards down. Um, yeah. yeah, good. And the, the layout is, is very traditional. It's not just, I mean, we come from Nottingham, and when there's a new estate goes in, the houses are hemmed in and it's it builds as many houses as, as you can on the plot whereas this looking just down this street here um it's nice and wide it's nice and open and it just feels it feels relaxing welcoming, welcoming. Yeah, yeah it's, so. it's nice um, I believe it's very indicative of the change that Nuki is going through itself. Uh, if you go back about five or so years, Nuki used to be full of stag and hen dews. Uh, it was a very uncomfortable place to be even past seven o'clock. Uh, if it was anything dark, you would see men in groups of five, six to eight, possibly even more, dressed up in fancy dress. They'll be all over the place, uh, absolutely trolleyed as well. Same with the women as well. But now we've kind of got a new kid that's a bit more quiet. Uh, loads of new restaurants have opened. Uh, there's an Australian restaurant in Nuki, um, and it's becoming a little bit more gentrified. And this is very much that pushing force, I believe, because Good. this is a middle class estate, and it is very much so. The, you'll see it in Nuki as well. Like just the the amount of uh, tourism coming from uh, from London now. The biggest tourist route. The biggest tourist demographic to come through into Wargate Hotel is 32 white from South East London. So you kind of see that changing corner where it's changing from a, uh, I wouldn't know how to say it, kind of a bit backwater to, uh, to now a mm. very middle class, gentrified, mm. gentrified class. So what, what sort of people that live here, you say it's <coughs> excuse me, a middle class area, um, 
where would people work? What, what industries are around here? For... Um, is it... Well, just uh, the biggest industry in Cornwall is still tourism, retail. Yeah. Um, but around here, it's hard to say. There is a very big, diverse group of people. I myself am a student. Uh, my parents uh, both work in uh, civil services. Um, and you were from here originally, then, or, uh, or this I'm area? From Cornwall, actually. You know, which is which is a good point because uh, a lot of people around here aren't from Cornwall originally. So right. I myself from Norwich. Um, I find it you, you do find it quite a struggle to find people that are from Cornwall that live in this estate. Mm. Right. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, we presumed it was being brand new. It was built for the Cornish people. It was obviously the problem of affordability and whatever. So we thought it was going to be all people from Cornwall. No, I definitely agree. Um, I wouldn't say that was by design. I'd definitely say that this is somewhere to embrace Cornishness. Uh, all the streets, if you look at the streets. Sorry, you're filming it. I'm so sorry. Sorry. That's where good editing comes in. But you'll look at the street names, uh, over there we've got Stret Uther Pendragon, uh, Stret is street in uh, Cornish, and Uther Pendragon was King Arthur's dad, you've got the Arthurian legend in the Chagel as well. So it was a very, very Cornish based place, and it does embrace that heritage of where it's come from. Um, I think it's simply a byproduct that you have these type of people that are moving in here. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much, guys. So, what are you studying? So just one last thing before we go, you've got a, an opening of some sort? Yeah, so today we're opening the Sang, the suitable area for natural greenery. Uh, it's going to be a hundred acres of natural land where there'll be roaming cattle, uh, there'll be wooded areas, there'll be, it's Cornish landscape basically. Uh, it's the grand opening today in around about 15 or so minutes and um, there's a bake-off, there's lots of fun down there, there's lots of action down there today. So I really think you should uh, check that one out. All right, we all head on down there. Head on down. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Have you got a future YouTube star here? Yeah. Oh, I knew he would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks very much. Got you. Oh no, I don't want to be on it. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Tom. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Thanks, anyway. Bye. Take care. And as Tom was saying, the street names are all Cornish. And the layout, as Keith was saying, the streets are nice and wide. It's not just your box standard in rows, different designs of buildings. And it has got a nice relaxed atmosphere, hasn't it? Has, it? Yeah. Not something you find in new builds, new towns, or... I suppose a lot of the, uh, the design has to go down to it being Dutchy land and Prince Charles being into architecture and, and sustainability. Even the alleyways and smaller streets make them like Cornish villages, aren't yeah. they? The, the layout and it's not all square. Everything no, you know, you've got that house down there at an angle. That's an angle, so. yeah. Impressive. Very. A lot of town planners could uh, learn a lot from here, couldn't they?
and away from the uh, the main road. It's very quiet and peaceful, it is. isn't it? Well, we'll just have a quick look at the new school. It's a Saturday, so there's no kids, so we'll be all right filming. So this is the cafe in the new village. The little Cornish pantry. If you're ever in this area, give it a whirl. And this is a new school that only opened a few days ago. Which again looks bright and welcoming, doesn't it? Mm. And the last thing we've noticed about this school is it's got a charging point. Don't know whether that's for staff cars. It doesn't seem to be a staff car park. Or for visitors or school drop-offs. Doesn't really say who it's for, but it's free to use. I don't think as many schools have got those. Have got no. those. It's a lovely building for a school. And it's even got a drop-off point so parents can drop the children off if they can't if they're not walking which is good a lot of the older schools obviously there's a problem with congestion when children are being dropped off and the sign above the door you probably won't be able to see say skull nansledden or nansledden Cornish school for school. It almost makes me want to go back to school. So we're heading off to the uh, new 100 acres. Um, site of sustainable or suitable greenery, a sarg. Uh, we'll find out more about it when we get there. <laughs> so this is it, the new community area. 30 hectares of land. community area where people can come and walk, have picnics, enjoy the countryside. So we, we've met two people who live in Nansledden who are going to tell us a little bit more about this uh, lovely open space. It's called the Sang and it's a duchy of Cornwall land and it's for the local communities to be able to come and walk their dogs and um, for children to play in and uh, it's just really for their local communities 
there's lots more people coming yeah. to Nanslade and then building more houses. Uh, it's, it's, we've just been to the cafe over the road and it's beautiful. It's, it's lovely, just isn't it? the layout of the town. And it's, yeah. Is it a town or is it a village? I think it's a town. Yeah, yeah. yeah the size. It's, it just feels so welcoming. It is. For, it's lovely for a new it. build. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. well put together as well. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. a lot of time and travel. So yeah. Yes. I mean, we're saying that that's obviously a lot to do with Prince Charles, we would think, yes. and, and yes. his love of architecture. And, yes, he's very well. interested in it and he comes down quite as well, I think, as often as he's able to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. But they were saying there's going to be cows roaming. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cows. yeah brilliant. Right. Still in the lead. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you'd round them up, wouldn't you? <laughs> they certainly would. <laughs> they certainly would. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. We've come down to the opening of all of this. What is it? it it's an it's called the Sang. Uh, the Sang. The Sang. Right. And I can't remember what it stands for, but I'll remember it in a minute. <laughs> and we, we pop, not, uh, bumped into the minister. I'm Tess. Hello. I'm a uh, minister for St. Colin Major, um, and I live on the New Nans Leaden estate. So I have about a 10 minute journey to get to my patch, my parish. But all, because I live here, I want to be involved in everything that's going on in the local community as well. And this is our grand opening of our new area of national beauty. As you can see a wildflower meadow um, right behind us. If you turn the camera that way, <laughs> you'll see this beautiful, well, it used to be beautiful. It's now dying off a bit because it's obviously September. But uh, it will look beautiful again. And uh, we're going to spend the day here and we're going to go for a nice walk for the first time around having a look at the place. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic resource. You can see there's kind of cycle paths going yeah. in. It is, it's beautiful. It's going to be stunning. Oh. And they were telling us at the cafe you're going to have cows in here. And, That's right, because the cows keep the um, the meadow under control. Yeah. They reduce the amount of uh, uh, green um, fertilizer that goes on the land, so it allows the um, the, uh, the the meadow to grow more yeah. fervently. Yeah. So, uh, that's the whole point of the cows. I don't think we'll be milking them. But no, no. <laughs> not yet. Else will do that. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's. Lovely. Uh, we can't decide whether it's a village or a town. I suppose the size of it. It's a town, isn't it? But it's, well, Nans Leden at the moment. We, I think, probably think of it as a community. Don't yeah, we? it is. Um, well, it, it certainly felt like it'll that. It'll get big enough it to be a, its own town yeah, in time, I suppose. It, it is beautiful. We're going to have our own high street and our own yeah. pub, and we've got yeah. our school already. So yeah, the school's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. It opened on beautiful. last Monday. People believe. thought it was a hotel. It was so yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually just filmed it and I actually said it makes me want to go back to school. Does it? So, yeah. Oh, you <laughs> missed out on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, so you are, sorry? I am Environment Officer for Nansledden Community Association um, and SANG stands for Suitable Alternative Natural Green Space or Suitable Accessible Natural Green Space depending on whose definition we're using. <laughs> Um, but the idea of this is so that everyone in the area has got a lovely green space to use. Um, we, can bring, we can bring their dogs over, the children, um, and basically because Nansledden has been built over there, this is for the community so that they get something back. Yeah, 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 yeah? yeah. and it's lovely. It's and it is gorgeous, isn't it? One thing we didn't ask anyone was, what was it originally, that land? Was it mining or was it... Was it a complete um, new build or were the... I think there. largely, from, I remember looking at the surveys because I live over there, um, basically in this area you would have had a lot of farmland, mm -hmm. so I know there were cows on a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously if you look down there you can see remnants of the chimney. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in this area you would have tin mining, you'd have china clay um, and quarrying, yeah. right. so you would have yeah. lots of different things going on. Mm. I mean, we've said it to many people now we spoke to this morning, it's just got a beautiful community feel to it. Yes, yeah. the whole area. Good. I mean, we, we go to some place and we say we couldn't live here. We came here and say we could live here. You could live <laughs> yes. here. Okay, well, that's good so, to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. So this is our sort of soft opening today because it's not all finished. So yeah. in the middle there, where the dip is, mm. um, it's going to be what's called the suds. I don't know if you're familiar with what yeah. that is. So basically it's... Um, it's a sustainable urban drainage system. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea being that if there's a lot of rain and you get a lot of runoff, it'll go down almost like a natural lake. Yeah. So we'll plant some reeds and things in there. 
um, and then it acts as a sort of, a, you know, like a, a, a basin. Yeah. Um, but with the plants in it, it can take up much more water yeah. as well. So that's why you've got things and like reeds in there. And it's going to be wet as well. It'll encourage pond life or, yep. you know. Yep. So it'll be a bit of a bit wet, wet land yeah. essentially. Yeah. And then yeah. further down there, you can see where that line of trees. Yeah. Yeah. Along there, so that's kind of the edge, if you like, a bit of the sand. Um, that's a nat that's also a natural wet area, so it'd be like wet woodland. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see from the slope here, it's going to run down. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. So there we go. Well, thank so you how, very much. How have you been travelling around? Oh, we, we, it's only holidays. Thank okay. you. But, uh, but we hit down here for three weeks. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and thanks for bringing this good, lovely Cornish weather with you. Um, I'm delighted that so many of you have come for this. It's a soft opening of this, uh, it's called a sang, but let's not call it, it's a suitable alternative natural green space, but it's perhaps too well, and that's what, how we like it to be known. You'll see there's a few maps uh, that you can take away with you, and then you'll see in various positions where we put a few plans up, and you can see where you can walk around the first bit. In, eventually, in about, it's about 65 acres, and there's about 45 acres that now will be available to walk around. We will be doing some more works uh, over the course of the next four or five months, which will include over here a car park, some more allotments, um, and bits and pieces there. But this area here is pretty well complete, and I hope as you walk round, you'll see, it's unfortunately Diggory, who's done all the stonework and all the gate hanging, couldn't be here today, he's moving house. Not a great excuse, I thought. <laughs> um, but some of the work that he's done in the gra new granite posts, some of the stonework, and he's, he's made everyone a little bit different, um, and I hope you enjoy that. The other thing I'd love to do today is to thank the Midas team, and there's a few of them here today, for getting this fantastic school open on time and on budget. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. another view of the school as we leave the uh, SAG, SAG. Really go over there. And there's the town. No, you've been a good friend. And that's in the thick and thin. 